even if I had the money, which I don't, but if I, if I could afford it, it's hard for me to justify paying the expensive Los Angeles rent uh, when I'm rarely in town or rarely at home. It's where the brilliant idea of living in a van came from, and uh, it's working out so far. I got everything I need in here. I got food, storage, clothes, I got a bed. Until I get to where I want to be in my career, and I don't necessarily know where that is, but I don't want to be too comfortable. I feel like um, if you're too comfortable, you kind of uh, take your foot off the gas, and I don't, I don't want to do that. And the van is definitely a constant reminder of I'm not where I want to be yet. Not having to pay rent, uh, having almost no financial obligations. Um, I've got zero family or relationship obligations, no wife, no girlfriend, no kids, no mortgage, uh, almost no debt. So that is definitely the upside to it. But regardless of the width or the size, most beds are 75, most mattresses are 75 inches long. Well, the problem here, the width of the van is 71 inches. I just sawed five inches off my mattress, duct taped it back together, put a sheet on there, and boom, I've got a bed. Not much space back here, but I try to uh, exercise uh, good space economy. And by the way, I'm five foot nine. I got about an inch on each side to spare. Anybody taller than me, this would be a pretty uncomfortable uh, sleeping arrangement. I, I'm prone to kidney stones, so I have my emergency kidney stone kit, which consists of three cans of pureed asparagus, a gallon of distilled water, and some other uh, random stuff there. Got these curtains. My mom actually uh, made these curtains for me. I have one in the back, one in the front. Just random storage uh, on both sides. I'm um, just kind of MacGyvered this together. Uh, this is a standard closet rod. I uh, bought all this stuff at uh, Home Depot and installed that, uh, so that works out pretty good. It gets pretty hot out here in Los Angeles, so I got this silly little uh, battery-powered fan. I uh, installed this mirror, uh, not for any creepy purpose, just to uh, give myself a little optical illusion to make the place seem a little bigger than it is. Uh, a lot of times I just wind up staring at myself while I'm sleeping, so that's a little odd. Where are we going right now? I'm gonna go get some groceries. Today's grocery day. Who am I kidding? Every day's grocery day. This is a whole chicken, same price. This one's carved up for you. The average person, that's no, no big deal. But uh, somebody's gonna carve it up for me for no extra charge. I'll go with that. Ralph's has great bathrooms because they're in the rear of the store. I kind of share the same problem a lot of homeless people have, you know. You don't have your own toilet, you gotta use the ones in public. But uh, homeless people, they don't, uh, they don't venture back to the rear of the store, so you know it's clean. People always ask, what do you do for food? You ever heard of a cooler? I'll get that, throw it in some of these baggies. I got chicken on the go, man. I try to drink as much water as I can. Sometimes that just gets old and stupid. So when I'm feeling crazy, I'll make some crystal light. <laughs> well, you're the one that was like, got me to do this, the the fake guy story again, and then that became like a staple bit. Oh, dude, that's killer. The way you open it, with the, what does he say? The guy that pops out of the van? He's <laughs> like, hey man, you like Halloween? You like Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you the exact place that happened in this neighborhood. He is officially from the great city of Atlanta, Georgia. Case on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, real quick.
quick, anybody ever call in sick to work because you ate too much at breakfast? <laughs> uh, Sunday will be a month. After a month, I get one cheat day where I can eat whatever I want. I think I'm going to cut to the chase and just eat a two-pound bag of flour. Put <laughs> all that shit in there. Put a stick of butter in there. I'll have some mouth biscuits. Uh, four o'clock in the morning. I'm sleeping. I wake up to some dude trying to break in the back, the back doors there with a the screwdriver. My first reaction was, oh crap, I'm getting towed. A couple seconds later, I figure, you know, the cobwebs shake out. I realize, oh man, no, some dude's breaking into my, my van. So uh, I grab my trusty machete here, keep a, a machete behind this uh, door. Um, not trying to be Charles Bronson here. I uh, have no intentions, intentions of using the machete. But in the event that uh, something were to go down, it, it is an intimidating weapon. So I grab the machete, I exit through the front door, the driver's door, I walk around the side, I peek around, dude doesn't see me. I got nothing but my underwear, weird semi-naked bearded dude holding the machete. He still doesn't see me, so I'm holding the machete and I'm just like, hey! And uh, scared the crap out of him. Dude drops his screwdriver, looks at me like he just saw a ghost. His buddy's uh, sitting in a truck about 10 yards down the street. He runs, hops in the passenger side, they speed off. I was torn as far as do I want to talk about this on stage because it's a very vulnerable thing. Uh, but then again, that's part of comedy is making yourself vulnerable. But it's not necessarily something I wanted to advertise, whether it be on stage or off stage. Like, oh, hey, I'm Dave, I live in a van. Um, but it's just, it's unique enough to where I feel like I would be doing a disservice to myself if I didn't address it, you know, on stage. I went on a date the other day. Uh, that was fun. But the reason that is weird is I live in a van. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I've been on a few dates in my time, but never while preparing for a date have I had to hide my piss jugs. Oh. <laughs> I live in a van because I travel a lot and I can't afford, you know, things. And uh, <laughs> it almost didn't have, I didn't realize how broke I was. I, I almost didn't get the van until uh, one day I, I was having trouble saving up for a down payment and I didn't think I would be able to pull it together. And uh, one day I caught myself saying aloud, Man, I'd sure like to live in a van, I just can't afford it. <laughs> Maybe one day. Keep working hard, stay focused. <laughs> By the way, if you're willing to live in a van, the government should just give you a van. <laughs> I'll vote for that guy. There you go, you hobo. Here's your van. Get off the grid. <laughs> if ever I can park on private property, that's the best. A lot of my friends are always like, oh, dude, don't, don't sleep in your van. You can sleep on my couch. I'm like, I appreciate it. This is a thing I chose to do. I appreciate your hospitality. If you really want to help me out, let me park in your driveway. So uh, if ever I can park on private property, like a friend's driveway or, or a parking space or something like that, that's that's primo, that's the best. Yeah, that was one of my spots right there, or is one of my spots, El Centro at Santa, Santa Monica. Uh, because I can park right in front of this lot here. This is a, uh, a auto body shop, and they're closed at night, so nobody's there. So parking in front of a, a closed business, uh, as far as harassment from, from neighbors or detection from neighbors, uh, that's much more ideal than parking right in front of somebody's nice little condo. Big fan of the rotisserie chicken. It's kind of messy in the van, so I'll uh, I'll take the chicken over to Rory's and carve it up. That's a funny phone call. Hey man, what are you doing? Can I bring over some chicken? Carve it up for about ten minutes, and I'll be out of your way. I do that about once a week. <laughs> Thank you.
we turn the spotlight on, it shines up on him on the roof, and he just starts wailing away on the horn. And it was great, you know, people loved it, it sounds good, and so I just started liking, you know, doing stuff like that. Like there. <laughs> that much fun. Yes. Yeah, it's gonna burn off most of it. That's what my doctor told me. <laughs> Obviously, you can tell I've been having a good year with my new outdoor dining room. <laughs> Just enjoy the song. Try to appreciate the night. At first, I thought it was infatuation. Unfucking believable.